Don't worry, I'll cut this out of the video. It's not exactly scintillating, is it? Watching somebody folding up a tripod. Hello everybody and welcome to a proper review video. I think it's the first time I've um, done a review on behalf of a company. So straight off the bat, this is a sponsored video. Uh, the lovely Wendy at uh, KNF Concept or Kent Faith to give them their official um, company name, kindly contacted me and offered me to review one of their products. And because <laughs> uh, myself and the use of tripods is something of a standing joke on this channel, I decided, uh, a bit of devilment, yes, um, I would like to review one of your travel tripods. And I opted for this one because it comes with a little attachment which I think some of you might find quite interesting. Now, <laughs> I don't really do unboxing videos. I could have done, but uh, on this occasion I've decided, you know, no point really, but I will do an unbagging video. That's because the tripod, I think with regard to all of them, comes with a very nice carrying case, shoulder strap, which is affixed with um, snap lock uh, hangers. I'll put some stills up um, during the course of the video so you've got a better idea of exactly what the thing looks like. And uh, the carrying handle is closed with Velcro. So we'll just take the thing out. Now this is the D255C4 or CL4, one or the other. I'll leave all the relevant links down below. Just put this bag away for a second. So there we are. It's one of these um, carbon tripods which folds up sort of reversed on itself, which is the, the norm these days with these travel tripods. And on first inspection, it's lovely. I like the uh, orange finish to the aluminium collars and things. That's very smart. Does it make any difference to the use? No, of course, but you know, I'm as vain as anybody else. <laughs> um, so yeah. This thing weighs about 1.3, 1.4 kilos. Um, slightly heavier than the old Chinese one that I've been using for a good few years. But um, it is also about 12 inches taller when it's fully um, set up with the center column at its highest. Uh, it comes with a ball and socket head, which you can see here. Just let's get these legs out of the way. Ball and socket head, very nicely finished. Um, Arca Swiss plate on the top, as you might expect. It does have a tiny uh, bubble level, so you can make sure that the uh, actual camera stage is uh, completely level. Well, as level as you can get it with a small spirit level like that. And the ball and socket head has degrees marked off around the side so that you can accurately determine where you need to change camera position if you want to do a panorama. Um, it's not the same as a proper panoramic head, of course, but um, it's pretty darn good, to be honest with you. The uh, top plate is also marked, so that if you decide you want to offset the Arca Swiss plate, you can do. And of course, it uh, removes very quickly it's also got a very nice non-slip grip finish to the top. And the other thing that I like is that the actual camera fitting, you don't need to use, you can use a coin or a screwdriver, but it does have a, a, a handle so that you can tighten your camera down without having to fiddle around looking for extra tools and things like that. It's a nice little touch. So I'll just pop that in there. So tripods like this are a compromise, let's be honest. Um, if you are using a 
medium format film camera uh, or something even larger, um, five by four, that kind of thing, then something like this is not going to be sufficient for you. But for someone like me, who really, I don't, it's not that I dislike tripods. There are occasions, of course, when I've um, had to use them. I'll put some nighttime images up for you to have a look at so that you know what I'm talking about because um, I guess I need to prove that I do occasionally use a tripod. So it's, it's a compromise. Um, it's, it's weight over practicality, I guess. And for me, this is going to be ideal. The legs are adjustable. When you fold them out to begin with, they lock in that position. Uh, but by altering the clips, you can change it to get it pretty much horizontal if you need to. And um, there's a, a nice spring action to these. They're not too stiff. Um, it comes supplied with an Allen key. So obviously over time, some of these uh, retaining bolts here can work loose, but you do get an Allen key included with it. Now the legs are twist lock. Nice and easy, very smooth. And um, it's, it extends to 68 inches uh, with the center column fully up. Would I recommend you do that when using a camera on it? Probably not. If you can get away with not doing that, you'll have a more stable platform. But nevertheless, the height is there if you need it. And the center column is raised and lowered by this um, collar here, which has three uh, finger grips on it, if you like. And uh, just loosen it off and down it goes. Um, it is fitted with rubber O-rings, uh, top and bottom, so that when the center column does go all the way down. It's not metal on metal. There's a nice rubber O-ring here. And that uh, cushions the impact. Could be important when you've got your camera already mounted and you inadvertently leave this loose. You don't want it going smack a uh, The ball head controls are very nice and smooth. It's well damped, so when you rotate it, it's not flopping everywhere. I've deliberately decided to test this. Maybe unfairly, I don't know. I'm gonna set it up now to its full height. I'm gonna put the EM1 Mark II on it, and I'm gonna fit the 100 to 300 Lumix lens and set it to 300 mil, which is 600 mil equivalent, as you probably already know by now, um, to see exactly how much flex and or wobble we get, in particular when doing video. I'm just going to shoot a small short clip of video with the lens set up like that. Uh, and that should really tell me how much movement there is in the tripod and center column. Maybe rather unfair, but you know, it's an independent review. Yes, I've been given this by KNF Concepts. Uh, but they haven't insisted on what I say and how I test it, so here goes. Okay, so I've got the tripod set up. At the moment, the centre column is all the way down. And um, because I've got the part L grip on my EM1 Mark II, I don't need the supplied Arca Swiss plate. So I'm taking that out. And I'm just going to clamp the EM1 on here. Like so. And pan it round. Now you won't be able to see it on the GoPro. Um, one of the interesting facts about Prentice Park, which is where I am, is the fact that it... Um, it was um, instigated by a guy called Vaughan Yates. 
and um, designed by Joseph Paxton. And it was actually opened in 1842. Now, for those of you that saw an earlier video of mine about Birkenhead Park, Birkenhead Park is the first ever public park in the world. And that didn't open until 1847 or 49. So I thought, hold on a minute, this place opened in 1842. The reason for the difference in dates is the fact that Princess Park, this one, was actually a private park, but open to the public. Um, and Yates expected to get his money back by building and selling a lot of Georgian houses all the way around the perimeter. And I'm gonna photograph one of them, which is visible through the trees over there. Now bear in mind, this is with the Santa column down. And at the moment, the lens is set to 100. So that's 200 mil equivalent. And I'm just gonna do some video. Now the tripod is set up on the tarmac footpath. And I'm just gonna walk around it. I wanna see if I can make it vibrate at all. <laughs> I'm not exactly a svelte human being anymore. Um, so I'll be interested to see if we get any shake in that whatsoever. And now I'm going to zoom in. That's all the way into 600 mil, 600 equivalent. Oops, pardon me for all the movements. There we are. Now it's a fairly breezy day today as well. So um, if it can cope with this, I'll be more than happy. Again, I'm gonna walk around and I'm actually gonna tap the tripod now. I'm gonna flick it. So apart from hearing me tap the tripod, you can see the image vibrating. So there is some flex in it, but bear in mind we're at 600 mil here. Now I'm gonna extend the center column. And we're taking it all the way up. I have a suspicion it's, fo it's focusing on the trees rather than the building, but nevertheless, I hope you get the idea. So is it ideal for video with a 600 mil equivalent lens fitted to it? My opinion is probably not in all honesty, um, but it's an extreme example. The weight limit of this is something like 20 pounds, uh, whatever that might be in kilos. I'll put the equivalent up in the comments or in the uh, notes for you. I think that's pretty impressive to be honest with you. Um, trying to support a camera and lens. I mean, okay, admittedly it's micro four thirds, but supporting a camera and lens with a 600 mil equivalent focal length is pretty darn good on a travel tripod. Let's remember that. Now, one additional feature which this has, and I think it's pretty much common across different manufacturers' ranges these days, you can detach one of these legs and it then turns itself into a monopod. Nice and simple, just unscrew the ball head and away you go. There we are, we'll just stand the two legs up there, reattach the ball head. And you have a very useful monopod. Um, okay, admittedly, it's a little bit on the short side, but of course the beauty with these modern cameras is that you can use the tilting screen to still frame your shot up, even though this may be below eye level. I'm testing this tripod. It's a travel tripod, so it's not like uh, it's not like one of the big, heavy, professional ones. I'm doing it now. Oh, sorry, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> it's all right. Just had an extended chat to that gentleman as he went past, so I've lost my train of thought. Anyway, um, I've now taken the 100 to 300 lens off, put the 12 to 40 on, and I've actually splayed the legs out. I wanted to see how much sort of up and down flex there might be with them in this position. And to be perfectly honest with you, there isn't any. That is very stable. If I lift the centre column up,
The flex comes in the center column, not in the legs. So I, I reiterate what I said earlier on. Um, if you can possibly get away with it, and this applies to most tripods, to be honest with you, even heavyweight professional ones, always try and use them with the center column down if you can get away with it. So what conclusions have I come to? Well, um, for a start, I thought it was secure on this Arca Swiss plate, and boy, it certainly is. Um, it's really very stable, it's point number one. Um, there's no point having a tripod if it isn't stable. That might sound like an obvious statement, I know, duh. But for a carbon fiber travel tripod, I think it's excellent value. Now, I'm just gonna fold the legs in so I can show you just the final couple of touches. And this, one of these is the reason why I chose this particular tripod to review. All right, so let's drop the center column down as well for now, because I just want to point out that it does come with a, uh, a hook at the bottom of the center column. So that is that. Now we'll leave the center column up. Now, the other thing that this comes with Oh, if I can find it. There's a different type of Arca Swiss plate. Um, it's anodized in the lovely same orange as the rest of the metalwork on this lovely tripod. And it's a mobile phone holder or a cell phone holder for our cousins over in the States. Um, I've got an old cell phone in it at the moment. And again, I'll put some stills up for you to have a look at, but basically it folds flat. So this can by itself replace the standard Arca Swiss plate that they supply. Like so, um, great idea. But because it's flexed, hinged rather, at both ends, You pull it out and twist, and it's spring-loaded, and it will take um, quite a few different cell phones, mobile phones. The one that I brought out is an old Samsung. Um, I suspect if you've got one of the latest and biggest um, iPhone Pro Max 134, whatever they're up to these days, um, it probably wouldn't um, take a very large mobile phone. But what a great idea, don't you think? Um, so you've got a two-in-one here. You've got an Arca Swiss plate, which you can use on the base of your camera, point number one. Point number two, um, if you do want to do some stills with your cell phone, the end of it is also grooved in the Arca Swiss style. So you can clamp it to your ball head. Oops, I missed. Get it right, Alan. Professionalism or what? And there you are. Um, so you've now got your cell phone firmly attached to your tripod. And I know what you're thinking. Why? <laughs> well, um, even I, <laughs> uh, even I went through a phase a couple of years ago of doing all my photography on a cell phone. And there are a number of apps that you can get now, which will allow you to do, um, long exposure photography. Uh, and that's why I think this is really useful. If you're going out with your camera gear and your tripod, and you do want to take some selfies, this is much better than a selfie stick, let's be honest. Um, and of course, don't forget, um, the beauty of this is, as well, that you've got the monopod leg off here. So, um, if I wanted a longer reach 
for my um, GoPro, I could use the detachable leg off here as a monopod, um, which then becomes like a ruddy great long selfie stick. Um, it's very flexible, that's what I like. And um, I just thought this little addition was a good enough reason for me to actually pick this one to review rather than a more uh, boring standard version. <laughs> so there we are, the KNF Concept D255C4. Uh, there is a short um, product number for it rather than that long uh, one that I've just given you, which I'll, I'll put in the notes down below. So if you'd like to uh, invest in not just a tripod, but um, any of the KNF Concepts range of products, um, if you quote my um, code number, which I'll put in the notes down below, you will get 10% off. And I think that goes on until December of this year. So um, I am unashamedly saying, take a look at their website. Uh, there's an awful lot of stuff on it. And if like me, you like good products, then to be fair, they are really, really good. Um, I love their filter set and this is gonna stay with me. Nice little tripod. So there we are. That is my first sponsored review video. I hope you get something out of it. Uh, whether you will buy one of these or not is entirely up to you, of course. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you will continue to enjoy your photography. Otherwise, why bother? Uh, and I'll see you all very soon for another video. So take care. Stay safe. Bye for now.